We live in a world where the SUV is king. All the big players are at it and seemingly everybody wants one too. So at first glance, what do we think this is? It's an SUV, right? It's got all the right ingredients. It certainly looks like an SUV. Wrong. This is the new Citroen C4 and it's a car that the maker is referring to as a hatchback in all of its marketing literature. So what does that mean for you as a buyer? In this video, we'll uncover everything you need to know. But before we do, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Car Buy YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. So the C4 is officially a hatchback then. That puts it up against some impressive rivals in the shape of the Volkswagen Golf, Vauxhall Astra and Renault Megane. But there's one thing those cars can't offer, a choice of petrol, diesel and electric versions. Which engine you go for will depend largely on how you plan to use your new C4. The petrols are quiet and efficient. You should be able to do 50 miles a gallon without much effort at all. And the diesels, those will suit higher mileage drivers looking for a car to cover long distances in complete comfort. 60 miles a gallon is possible. And then there's the electric version, which is pretty competitive when it comes to range and charging. It's actually a really good starter EV for those new to electric motoring. But whichever version you go for, you get this distinctive front end treatment with these headlights and daytime running lights, chunky wheels, and this black cladding. You also get this coupe style roof line, but a car like this needs to be practical. So let's have a look inside. Amazingly, that roof line doesn't do too much damage to space in the back here, and that's thanks to the way this roof has been sculpted on the inside. I'm six foot tall and I've got plenty of space back here probably wouldn't want to sit three abreast for all too long but overall there's very little to complain about. Now elsewhere you've got a couple of USB ports down here, some vents for the air conditioning and you've got ice fix points in both of the outer chairs. Now Citroen's history of building family friendly MPVs shines through in here. You've got 16 cubby holes with 40 litres of extra storage. They're dotted all around the cabin including the door bins and the door pockets and some stuff in the front as well. That practicality continues with the boot. There's 380 litres to play with, which is near enough what you'll get in a Golf. Better still, if you do choose the electric C4, there are no compromises to be made. It gets the same size boot as the petrol or diesel versions, which is pretty unusual. Fold the seats down and that 380 litres expands to 1,250 litres. Citroen has also included an adjustable boot floor that can either be raised up to prioritise a smooth and flat loading area, or drop down to favour outright space. In the electric versions, this is handy for storing the cables. Now we've touched on Citroen's preference for practicality, but let's not forget its close ties with comfort because it all goes back to the old days with the old 2CV when Citroen claimed that that car could transport a full basket of eggs across a ploughed field without a single one breaking. And now while we're not gonna try that today, it's clear that Citroen's engineers have spent a lot of time making this car comfortable rather than particularly sporting like some of its rivals. You see, the C4 has what Citroen calls progressive hydraulic cushion suspension, and it's all designed to give this car an almost floating, super soft ride quality. And do you know what? It actually works pretty well. It certainly takes the edge off potholes, and on the motorway, it filters out all those little lumps, bumps, and ridges that you would almost certainly feel if you were driving a Ford Focus or a Renault Megane. Of course, the trade-off is that it's not nearly as fun to drive as either of those rivals and it's not helped by the light steering either. There are currently three petrol engines, two diesels, and an electric version of the C4 to pick from. As always, the full list of engine options, power outputs, and performance figures can be found at carbuyer.co.uk, but we reckon this middling 1.2 litre petrol will suit most buyers down to a T. With 128 brake horsepower, it feels quick enough, and if you want to, you can spec it with an automatic gearbox. Just like the one we have here, it's actually really nice to use. The shifts are smooth, but do you know what? The manual gearbox is actually quite nice as well, and it's actually much better than old Citroen manual gearboxes, which felt a bit loose, a bit baggy, and a bit vague. So if the manual is the one you want, the one you can afford, or just the one you need, then you're unlikely to feel shortchanged. The electric version, which we've also tried, is great as well. The power delivery is smooth, and thanks to the fact you get all that power from a standstill, it feels really nippy as well. If the 200 odd mile range suits you and your driving style, it's really worth considering. Again, you can get a full rundown of the Citroen C4 specs on our website. But whichever version you go for, you get this lovely looking 10 inch touchscreen and a digital instrument cluster. The same scents and shine trims available elsewhere in the Citroen range feature here too. 
even the entry level Sense has a competitive level of kit, with LED headlights and 18 inch alloy wheels. Sense Plus adds luxuries such as a head up display and a rear view camera. Shine brings features like tinted rear windows and adaptive LED headlights, while Shine Plus cars like ours have leather seats, a wireless charging pad, and a premium sound system. The C4 strikes a middle ground in this class when it comes to interior quality. There's just enough soft touch materials to stop the car feeling cheap, and even the less expensive materials on the doors and the dashboard have been textured to give it a more attractive appearance. There's also been a victory for common sense when it comes to the climate controls because these use rotary dials down here rather than being buried in the entertainment system like Citroens of old. Now you've got a smaller glove box because the fuse box is in there, it's only a problem on right hand drive cars, not an issue on left hand drive cars when the steering wheel is on this side. Above you've got this pull out drawer which is an iPad holder for the passenger. Is that a good idea? I'm not so sure. Anyway, time for some deal makers and deal breakers. The Citroen C4 ignores its rival's sporty pretensions to focus on comfort and by and large it has worked. Petrol, diesel or electric, you pick what works for you. We'd recommend the entry level model as it comes with all the kit you'll need. Top spec models are very lavishly spec'd. Unfortunately you can't have your cake and eat it. It may be comfortable but this isn't a car you will look forward to thrashing down your favourite B-Road. Though for many, that won't matter. So there we have it, a family SUV that according to Citroen is not an SUV at all but a hatchback instead. So if you like your hatchbacks or your SUVs as comfortable as they come, loaded with kit and with a wide range of engine options then there's a lot to recommend here. You'll have to love or at the very least like its quirky styling but that never harms sales of the original Nissan Duke and this is a much much more accomplished car overall. So try it, you might even like it. If you like this video make sure you watch our Volkswagen Golf review or if you're looking for a small SUV as many of you will be our family SUVs playlist. As ever thank you for watching.